Yo, what's up guys? With CG being out and Bloodvine being in very, very high demand lately, I uh, wanted to throw together a little guide on how to farm it as a rogue. It um, requires you to have a Blood Scythe, which I actually made a video for, and I will link it in the description if you don't have one already. Um, Bloodvine farming is very, very profitable right now because it is used for the uh, best in slot healing set for mages and warlocks and uh, it is actually fairly simple to do once you get the route down and once you learn all the the pathings of all the mobs it is pretty simple and pretty straightforward you will die a few times learning it and figuring out all the paths and everything like that but once that's down you'll be cruising and making a lot of bank i'm running the pvp spec for rogues uh, what's really really important about this is that you get the improved stealth and the camouflage so you move faster in stealth and you can Basically, you, you have better stealth. That's that's the main part of it. So to begin with, we want to go down the left side once you enter CG. At the end of the video, I will have a little section where I show you guys all the herbalism spots that I choose to do and how I do them. So if you want to skip to that, feel free to. It's going to be at the end of the video. So to begin with, you go left of the CG entrance and you creep up to the first two spawns here. This one, you go behind the little pillar here and you creep up to the little Sam Sam here and you can loot it. So that's the first spot. Every single one of these herbs have a, I believe it's 10 to about 25% chance of dropping into Bloodvine. And at the moment on my server, those are going for around actually 30, 35 gold, which is very, very good considering you can get like five to eight an hour. The next one here, you gotta be careful about the paths and uh, LOS yourself behind the pillar and loot the Lotus. After this, we'll be mounting up or just running towards the other side, right here and jump down into the river to the crocodile, crocodile place and just run up. Uh, that's my first bloodline already right there. That's already 35 gold, just in two minutes. Actually, just one minute. So this one right here, go to the left. There will be a little fish in the water that you gotta avoid. This one right here, you can just scouch it if you don't want to take the damage. Here I was a little bit unlucky and it, it parried me. So after this, we run up the ledge and there will be a pathing berserker on the route here. You will be, <laughs> you'll become very, very familiar with the berserkers once you've entered CG a little, um, a few times. But you, you should learn the pathings eventually and uh, you'll figure out how to deal with them. Uh, also, you gotta be wary about the bats in Silk Group. So the bats all have increased movement speed and they have stealth detection. So if you see a pat, with some bats in it, or if you see um, a, a pack of mobs with some bats in it, you do want to avoid them at, as much as you can. So the next place we're going to go to is the Temple of Bethek, which is the Panther Temple. And there are a few nodes around the temple that we want to pick up, notably the ones on the side, and there's one in the back as well. The one in the back is a little bit different than the ones on the side. So if you pull the mobs here like I did, you can just run up to the ledge here and jump to the second layer on the temple. And this is a safe spot. You will basically be able to reset the mobs. That's that's the main part of it. So once you reset the mobs here, uh, you go check for the last little herb at the end here. And if it's up, you want to jump down to the last layer and have your sprint ready because you will need it here. So this entire pack pulls together. You pull the pack. So you want to save your sprint till you get to this pack right here. Use your sprint. Gouge mob if you need be. And once you're all the way up, you can jump down immediately and you can loot your dream foil. Or there's a dream foil and there's a golden Samsung here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you just after the, in any herb. So jump down here, wait for them to reset. Once they've reset, you jump down, you pick up the herb and hopefully you get a bloodline. So for the next one, this goes for all the ones on the sides. They are pretty much the same way you do them, all of them. So what you do is you pull the mobs and you run up the ledge at the beginning here, the little staircase, and you wait for the mobs to get as close as possible to you. If you need to, you can gouge the, the first mob in the pack so you can get everybody bunched up together. And once they're as close as possible, you jump down, you get as, as far out on the ledge as you can, and you figure out where the Sam Sam is because those, the Sam Sams are they're, they're impossible to see, but once you've learned to spawn or like the spawns, you you can figure out where they are pretty easily. So you jump down and you gotta be pretty fast to be able to get this one. Here you can either choose to vanish, like I did, or you can just pop evasion and run all the way up, kite them up, and reset them again. If you're really, really fast and if you have the other spawns at the further on the sides, you will be able to to do this pull without having to use vanish or resetting because you can make it before the mobs actually even arrive. For the next one, 
there we will be going to the tiger temple, tiger place, I guess. But first, we'll be stopping at the snakes right here. So these snakes are pretty easy to do. What you want to do is you want to blind one of them and gouge the other one. And gouge as soon... Oh, sorry. And you want to you wanna pick up the herb as soon as you gouge. It's very important you blind the snake that is furthest, the furthest away. Because the adders, they have a ranged spit. Which can screw over your herping. So, either here you can choose to vanish, uh, or you can sprint all the way over to this reset point that is over here at the tigers. So, keep yourself to the right, jump on this little jug, and then up here. This is a reset. Uh, no matter which mobs are after you, if you jump on this little ledge here, you will be able to reset the mobs. Um, on the tiger pad down here, there is a little cup that's patrolling between the left and the right packs. We will be waiting till he's positioned so we can pull him and every everything else so we won't have to deal with him when he when he runs back so he runs back he runs up right here you charge up your bow shoot him and to pull these mobs they will not run after you unless you run behind this little tree stump right here as soon as you go behind this they will begin leashing to you so as they run closer to you what's very very important is that you don't let them get too close to you because if they do you will enter combat again because they, they, they basically re-aggro you if you're too close to them. So you wait for them to lose combat. They, you lose combat a little bit after they begin running back. This little ledge that is below me, you can jump on next to the bamb bamb bamboo. And um, so there's two resets right here that are really, really easy to do. So if you cannot make it like I did here and reset it, you can jump on this little ledge right here that I'm showing and you can reset the mobs there as well. So you don't necessarily need a vanish to do this. The next spot we will be heading to is the imps at the Catch of Madness. These are pretty easy, but if you do aggro them, they can kill you very, very fast because they all cast fireballs that are instant. Uh, they have very, very high stealth detection, so you gotta make sure that you um, like stay a little bit away if you don't have mass of Deception. Honestly, all the Berserker paths are pretty easy to deal with because they have very, very linear pathings and they are very very slow so you can maneuver around them or distract them or deal with them like that so you want to stay on the left right here avoid the fast pack that is moving so there's three packs you gotta be worried about there's a fast pack moving across the whole cache of madness there is one slow path that i'm running to the left of right now and there is another one that is circling the troll that's like kneeling in the middle here so you want to wait for them to be bunched up and you can distract them all together. Or you can just wait for the for the fast pad to be all the way in the other end. Distract the slow pad right here as I'm doing. And then pick up the herb. There's also another one that is located a little bit earlier in this cache of madness. But it's the same deal. And you do it the same way. So already here, I got, I got another plot line. And uh, we're looking really, really good. So far, I've already... I mean, I've already made like almost like 100 gold. Um, the thing about this is it's very, very RNG. You get... I would say an average one to two bloodvines per run, and the runs take... If you've managed to do it quite a few times, you can do a run in about 12 minutes. So right here, you want to jump on the little ledge here, jump down, use your stealth to get across very fast, distract these arrows if you need to, and then head towards the bat area. I do not recommend doing this if, you, if you're not confident that you can run away from the bats, in my video here, I will actually be dying, but I wanted to show you why this is a little bit more difficult than it, um, than it than the other places. So all the bats have stealth detection, and they can run very fast. So you have no way of escaping them. If they, if they aggro you, you're dead. So there are, I believe, five pathing bats. There's one that has two small bats and a big one, and there's, one, there's three other ones that are circling around. So all the... All the bats, they circle around the herbs. There are three of... No, there, there's four spawns total. And there's also two humanoid packs pathing around. So you can stick around a little bit, figure out how the pathings are, and then you can eventually learn how to do this a little bit more efficiently. I'll be showing like a clip in the end how I do it a little bit more perfectly than this. So what, I, what you do here is you wait for them to path all the way to the end, you pick up your herb, and you run away. Don't use stealth, because they have stealth detection. Right here, I got a little bit greedy. And I aggro the mobs. So as you see here, I blind one, I gouge one. And even though if I use Vanish, they will still follow you. Because they have stealth detection. So there's no there's no need to waste your Vanish like I did here. But I guess it's a good showcase to see why you wouldn't do this. 
And um, yeah, that, that's basically why. Even though that I did die, I still get back to the instance in 14 minutes and I'm ready for my next run. So you can do four runs an hour if you do it like this. You can do it up to five if you prefer to extract a little bit more. You get an average of one to two bloodbinds per run, which is basic. It's up towards like eight or nine bloodbinds an hour, which on my server sells for around 35 gold right now. Um, you make it up towards 200 gold an hour. I did an hour of farming, um, which I uploaded like the raw footage to YouTube. If you guys are interested in that video, seeing like how it, how I did and how how much gold I make, I will put like a link to the video in this in the description below. And in that run, I made 250 gold in a span of one hour and four minutes, and I died three times. So you can figure out how much money you can make on your server. The prices may vary a little bit, and they may get a little bit lower. But that's just how it is, you know. Here's the here's the clip from that video. So I made a bunch of Silver Sage, I made a bunch of Dream Foil, I made some Blood Vines, I figured out all the prices on the server that I am currently on, which is Feralina, and it made up to be 250 gold in one hour and yeah, seven minutes. So once you get this strat down, I've only been doing this for a day now, and I've already made over like a thousand gold. So do this as much as you can right now, you're going to be making a lot of gold on the bloodline, and yeah, it's going to be really, really profitable for you. So, all the possible locations and all the possible herbs that I pick, I have shown on the map right here, and I will go through them periodically so you can see every single spawn and how I do it, if you did not catch it in the first little glimpse of the video here, where I just speed ran through it. The first one is located right to the left. When you come right to the left, when you come in of the instance, you inch up to the herb and you pick it up and you backpedal back or you just strafe back and you pick up your first herb. That's as simple as that. The next one is located a little bit further down, which is node number two. This one, you stealth all the way up. There's a bunch of pads. If there is a pad, you can distract him like I'm doing right here. You go behind this pillar, you LOS all the mobs and you pick up your herb. Very, very easy to do as well. This is one, some of the easiest uh, herbs you can pick up in the beginning. Uh, very, very, very free, actually. <laughs> you, you will not die here. The temple nodes, the first temple node right here is the one on the far north. So this one, you walk all the way up to the mobs, you pull them with a bow, you sprint at the very end like here, so you can avoid the, pot, the pack that you will pull. You jump down. If you have multiple herbs, you can wait a little bit like I did here to make sure you can get both in the same. You wait for the mobs to reset and you go down and you pick up your herbs. You gotta be wary about a few panther packs that paths around the temple. You may have to distract those guys or blind them if there is a um, opportunity to do so. So right here, pick up these two herbs and hopefully get a bloodline as well. Uh, the next one we will be looking at is the ones on the side of the temple. So these ones you pull from the second layer like this, wait for them to walk all the way up to you. You go behind these small pillars on the, on the corners. And if the mobs are very close to you, you can gouge one of them and you just jump down. You want to make sure that all the mobs are all the way up. The shadow hunters may be a little bit more difficult to deal with because they are ranged and they will stay a little bit further back. So once these mobs are all the way reset, you jump down, you pick up your herb. You can use a sprint to you if you want to make sure that you don't aggro them. I was a little bit too fast here and I was kept in combat. If this happens to you, you can pop innovation, run through them like this, and reset the mobs on the second layer again. Or you can use a vanish, whichever you prefer. I try not to use all my vanishes like this though, because I want to save them for places where I can actually die, instead of using a safe spot like this to survive. The next one we will be doing is the other side. You pull the mobs, you wait for them to run all the way over to you. You stand here on the ledge, you can use your bandage if you do wish to do so here. If you feel a little bit low on health. And you wait for the mobs to go all the way up. Once they are as close as humanly possible to you, you can gouge the, f the, f the first one, jump down, and you can pick up your herb. Just as easy as that. But do be aware of the panthers that are circling around the area because they can aggro you and they can screw you over pretty bad. So you jump down, you pick up your herb. Very, very straightforward. Temple is super easy to do. And yeah, free herbs and a bloodline as well. Look at that. So the node to the right of the temple, the, the panther temple is node number eight. So how you pick this one up is you run straight through the mobs 
and you run all the way up here like this on the ledge. You jump on the wall. The mobs will follow you on this wall, so don't stop here. And once they are a little bit closer, you jump to the other side like this and you wait for the mobs to reset. It's very important that you are mounted here, because if you're not mounted, you cannot get to the herb without getting in combat with the mobs afterwards. So do remember your mount. Don't do this pack if there's bats. Bats equals bad. Because they can see you in stealth and they are very fast. Uh, I have a little bit of struggle finding the Sam Sam here. You might have that as well. Um, but you'll figure out these spawns eventually and it'll be a little bit easier for you, I guess. The next one is on the ledge up here. It's the adders. You blind the one that is the furthest away and you gouge the other one. You pick up your herb. You use your sprint or your skull, skull of impending doom if you do have that one. And you run to the other reset point that we showed right before. So do the same thing. Around the ledge here, jump on the wall and follow it all the way to the end. Reset the ads and you can run to the next pad, which is over at the Tigers. This is a very, very good reset spot as well. If you get in trouble, you can sprint all the way up here and you can reset it up here. Or you can use your mount if you're mounted. So that's that's it for this one. The next one we'll be looking at is the one at the Tiger Temple. So the one at the Tiger Temple is super easy to do as well. You check for the sages, silver sages and samsams. This one is called node 11 on the map. So you go up here. So make sure all the tigers are pulled. Run all the way to this little tree stump. Once you get to this tree stump, they will begin to run to you. You have to get across this tree stump or they will not run for whatever reason. I don't know why Blizzard decided to do it like that. But this one, uh, make sure you, you don't get these very low because they will run and they will aggro even more ads because they run to their the boys. They run to their boys, mate. So once you do this, run all the way up to the little vase again, jump on the ledge, reset the mobs. Once they're reset, you jump down, you pick up your herbs. The ledge right below me is a safe spot as well. If you don't have your vanish and you aggro the tigers afterwards, it is a way to reset the mobs to, to do that here as well. Um, so you pick up the herbs here. There can be multiple ones and you can pick them up in the same go. Once you run closer to and if you're still in combat and you do not want to waste your vanish, you can do like I do right here. Go to the little tree here, jump up, run all the way to the end and spam your your um, your stealth. You have to spam your stealth here because they will re-aggro you because they're so close to the aggro range. The next one is in the cache of madness. This is node number 13. So there is a pad that is running very fast that I aggroed here. And there's this one that is moving slow that I also aggroed. So just be wary of that. Those can be really annoying to deal with. They have pretty high stealth detection. Just be wary of that. So you want to wait for them to get away from you and you pick it up. These are really easy. The fast moving pack has a very, very long pathing. So you don't really have to worry about it that much, honestly. The only thing you got to worry about is the small, slow moving ones. Because once the, the, the big ones are away, you have like 15, 20 seconds to loot the, the herb. Distract the ones pathing in the middle and pick up your herbs. Just as easy as that. The next one we'll be looking at is the one at the snake boss. I guess we're gonna call this one node 14. So this one right here, you wanna inch up all the way to the end of the ledge and you wanna target the first group of ants that are right here. And they're right down below, there's a little Sam Sam. This one can be really difficult to spot and I actually have, <laughs> I have failed a few times at finding it once I jumped down. But once you figure out the spot, you can find it pretty much every time. So wait for the mobs to run all the way up to you you jump down, you pick up your warp, and you have to vanish here. This is one of the packs where you have to use your vanish because there's no way to reset these. So only you, only do this one if you have your vanish up. The next one we will be looking at is on the little temple where you get your shoulder enchants. So this one I guess we'll call node 15. So right here, you go all the way up to the end of the little temple here. You pull the snakes down below. You wait for them to circle all the way up to you. And you do the same thing as you did on the temple that we did at the, 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 the Panther Temple, basically. So wait for them to circle up to you. I will be marking the one that's furthest away so I know how much time I have. Once they're close to you, you jump down and don't screw up like I did here. But you jump, basically, you can jump on the little ledge there and you can reset them and you can do the same thing. I screwed up here and I'm gonna have to use my vanish to survive. Most of these are actually really, really easy. I chose to not do the ones that are really difficult to do. The ones where you have to blind and sap and gouge because those have a very, very low fail save, and you will be dying a lot more if you do those. 
And with the method that I'm doing, I will be able to get all of the nodes in 14 minutes, 13 minutes, 11 minutes. This is the bat cave. Um, this is the hardest part of the whole farm. You're going to have to deal with a bunch of bats that circles around all the herbs and two humanoid packs and a another bat pack that circles around the whole area. So you can actually stay here for a little while, see how all the bats they circle around, try to maneuver around them. And you can figure out their pathings. And once you see they're in a, in a path that is far away from the herb, you distract them, you pick up your herb, and you run to the next one. Please be aware of all the bats have stealth detection, so it doesn't even matter if you are in stealth or not, except if the human packs are nearby. If the human packs are nearby, you do want to be in stealth, as I am right here. So you wait for them to go all the way back. Once they're far enough away where you feel comfortable to loot the herb, you distract them and you loot the thing. Sometimes they might resist and you might get a little bit screwed over, but it's pretty straightforward, guys. And that's basically all the notes that I pick up. Maybe some other people pick up some more, but these are the ones that I find easy to do. They are consistent and I don't die doing them. Uh, have fun farming, guys. Get this gold while you can, because the prices may fluctuate and they may become a little bit more volatile. I made a few thousand gold already actually doing this and uh, good luck guys. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. Yeah, peace out.